Good afternoon, soldiers. Good afternoon. Um, today we'll be going over relationships in the book of Ruth. I'm going to give you the brief summary of the story. There's this lady, her name's Naomi, and in her in her town there there's famine. So she, her husband, and her two sons go to another town, and in that town her husband dies. Her two sons marry, and both of the sons die. So she's there with her two daughter-in-laws. And so she's going to go back to her town, because in the town she is, they worship gods. And... So she's going back, and the two sisters, or daughter-in-law, she's like, you know what, just go stay here and, and marry here because the people from other, because in this area they worship gods, and where I'm, where I'm from we worship God. So they won't accept you, you're not, you know, it's not part of the clique anyways. So she's like leaving them, and she's like, I'm going to go over here and do my own thing. And so she says, okay, and one of them is called Ruth, and Ruth says, you know what, I, I married you, I got into your family, I know your son died and my husband died and it's the same guy and um, I'm just going to be with you and that's the end of it. So she gets with Ruth and they go into this land and so they're very, very, very poor. So Ruth goes out to this field and she's picking up wheat and she meets this guy named Boaz. And so there's Boaz, right? And this is a really rich guy and he looks at him and he's like, starts speaking in tongues and um, he gets on to her, right? So he looks at her and... He's like, what are you doing here? And he gets all the background check on her. And, and so he goes and she's working, coming back and forth. And Naomi tells Ruth to do this and this at this festival and we'll see his reaction. And so she does that reaction. And before you know it, Boaz gets married with Ruth. And they lived happily ever after. So we're just going to dissect that story we're going to read the bible and take the dust off of it slowly so we're going to start on chapter 1 verse 15 and she said behold thy sister-in-law it is is gone back unto her people she's talking about the other sister-in-law unto her gods return unto thy sister-in-law she said look the other one returned i mean go unto your other sister-in-law and go with her go into your land Dude, like i guess you really didn't show much care for them you know, just kind of like, you know, God doesn't love me. Uh, he's not going to love you either. I mean, just go and live your life, and I'll live my life, and we'll be able to be good. Verse 16, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from the following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my peoples, and thy God shall be my God. Verse 17, Where thou diest, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so unto me, and more also, if thou art but death, part thee and me. She's very, very completely dead focused on, on this person here. And I, whenever you read that, it's, it shows that she's so... committed so I don't know she's really intrigued into this one so verse 18 when she saw that she was satisfied minded to go with her then she left speaking unto her she was listening to her and she's like and she just turned around and kept walking and Ruth came and, and, and the note I have on that one is make no doubt about those who are instructing you about your commitment chapter 2 um, verse 1, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. Here he was fruitful before his marriage. In Genesis it says, be fruitful, multiply. Oh my gosh, I like this girl, let's have kids. Yeah, but the Bible says, to be fruitful in the world be established, be well founded, and then go and be fruitful. So as soon as I get a house and a car, I have every right to get married, you're wrong. Okay, so I have to wait, so if I have that I can get married, no. So if I don't have that I can get married, no. You get ready when God says you're ready. And when God says you're ready, normally, 
99.9% of the time, everything's already set. Money doesn't tell you when to get married. Houses don't tell you when to get married. Your emotions and people and money does not tell you when to get married. God tells you when to get married. Because when you rush into things, it's like you're eating a green banana. You will regurgitate it. And it's not very all that satisfying. And then we get mad at God. One, one guy says, I don't know how this is working out, Pastor. I'm so upset with God. And he said, why is that? He says, I walked up to this girl. And I told her, I feel in my heart. God wants you to be my girlfriend. And he goes, and when I touched her, she started speaking in tongues, brother. God was powerful there. And they went out. He said, a few months later, I walked up to her and I said, I feel like God wants us to depart. He goes, and we did. And they got God somewhere where he was never there. I think it's You know what? Sometimes, like my mom says, I think it's Sometimes our, I believe that your relationship shows your connection with God. I'm single, so I'm good. No, you're not. Some people carry their singleness as a flirtatious round, as a I like you, or they become so vulnerable. You can't have someone be nice to you because you already think they're in love with you. They're, they're, they're so weak. They're not satisfied. They're not, they don't have a purpose in going. She, she's single, so she's in God's will. No, if she's not preparing... She's not in God's will. She could have a thousand boyfriends and be the same thing completely out of God's will. Same thing for a guy. Um, um, I'd like you. Let's, let's date and then we'll see what God has for us. No, see what God has for you first and then date. See what God has for you first. I was talking to one guy and, and he says, me and my girlfriend, he goes, we did stuff we shouldn't have. We should have waited for marriage to have sex. He goes, but I was going to marry her anyways. So I married her. He goes, and the first six months of our marriage, our sex life was terrible. And I'm so surprised that he's sharing this with me because I'm like, it's the second day I know you, you're like, come on. And he goes, sex is not like it's in the movies. Neither are the fights. He goes, they, 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 they take so much out of it. They only show you the fake part. He says, sex is not like it's in the movies and neither are the fights. He goes, they don't show when you don't have money. They, they don't show when you're all alone. They don't show, he goes, that... When God tells you to save something for later, most likely it's because you're going to need it later. So I said, well, God. And he went on. And he said, the first six months of my marriage almost killed my marriage. Our sex life was like literally non-existent because we had ruined it. There was nothing new. There was nothing to experience. There was nothing I was going for as a husband because I had totally ruined it as a boyfriend. And some people are like, well, that totally excludes me out of this. I said, well, there's, there's people who are virgins and are more silsy than those who aren't virgins. I'm a virgin. Oh, I'm so pure. I'm so holy. And, and she doesn't seek God with her whole heart. And she doesn't know what, what pain is. She doesn't know. But the one who has had sex, the one who isn't a virgin, does seek God honestly and stuff, she's more correct and she's more right before God than the one who is a virgin. Your virginity is not your trophy. It's something that says, you know what? If you have it, thank God you have it. And take care of it. Fight it like a dog. And if you don't, that's okay. Say, God, I've messed up. Now, I probably won't have it as easy as she does, but that doesn't mean I can't have what she has. We're all on the same page here. Verse 8 on chapter 2. Then Bo, I said unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter, go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be upon the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee, that when thou art athirst, athirst go into the vessels and drink of which the young men have drawn? So note. Your searching has come. Your, your searching has come to a stop. Your hard work and your tenacity has paid off. So what she's doing here is she's how do I say this? She she came back, she was working in the fields. Back then there was this verse people lived by and it was a lot. It says, leave leave the corner. For the orphan, leaves a corner for the widow, and leaves a corner for the 
for the poor. It, they, they always left. Leave stuff out extra hanging out for those that are in need. Leave this out. Leave, don't, don't pick up all your table. Leave some for your for your maiden people, for the people who come and clean your table, your servants, so that they can take home. It, it's always giving. And so back then, they did the field. So the people who would go in after everybody picked up, they were the poor people. And so she's like, I'm moving in here with this lady, and I'm, I'm coming up here to pick this stuff up. And so she's picking it up. I'm thinking she's in her working clothes. And if you look pretty in your working clothes, I mean, if the Bible says you're pretty, you're pretty. If it says you're ugly, it says it right there. It's all truth. It's written in the Bible, folks. And so he, he looks at her and he's like, yo. He goes, I, I, I said all the guys, I told, I set them all straight already. In fact, do whatever you want here. In fact, this, this field, this field, that's all mine. Do go and, and pick all you want there. Just don't go to no other field. And what you work for, you value. I'm not saying you don't value things you don't work for, but you have a tendency not to. And her, everything she gave up, which we'll go over later, her searching has come to stop her hard work and her tenacity has paid off of her humility. Verse 10 on chapter 2, Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? She's like, I know you know I ain't from here. She goes, I know you think I'm one of those heathen women from that devil town next door. And, and I think how, the Bible says she throws herself at his feet and she says this. And she fell on her face. Her, her reaction, her humble heart, it just spilled out. I'm a princess and I never smile. I'm a princess and I have an attitude. I'm a princess and I don't listen to my parents. I'm a princess and I do what I want. And you want to call yourself a princess. I don't work. I, I just, I, I don't do that. I just, um, I, I don't clean dishes. I... I'm a king. Yeah, you don't even know how to serve. I, I, can't, I, I There's some people I'm like, hey man, yeah, we're gonna be helping, we're organizing the crusade and stuff. You know, can you help us out? Oh yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, we, we can be here and pray for people, and we can help you administrate people. But when we're out there picking up trash, they're not there. And the ones who are there, ready to serve, I, I, I can't be picking up trash because here they come. They already have their own bag of trash, ready to get going. And I said, man, God, I, I need, I want people like that. And I gotta draw people like that. Because what you are is normally how you draw people towards you. Her reaction, her humbleness, her heart just spilled out all over the place. Verse 11 And Boaz answered and said unto her, It has fully been shown to me all that thou hast done unto thy mother in law since the death of thine husband, and that thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of nativity and art come unto a people which thou knowest not therefore. He's like, I know you left your parents. I know your husband died. And I know you came here and you left everything else. Say, like, you know, do the background check or something. The Lord recompense thy work and a full reward has been given unto thee, the God of Israel. Under those wings thou art come to trust. And when she was risen up to glean Boaz, commanded his young men, saying, let her glean even among the shelves and reproach her not. And let fall also some on the hands full of purpose of her, and leave them, that she may glean them and rebuke her not. He's like, grab this girl, bless her here, give her this. She's like this lady that walks into the grocery store with like four bucks. And he's like, not to manage your woman, I own this place. He's saying, you know what, give her some cereal. Forget it, throw some peanut butter in there too. Oh yeah, you want some jelly with that? You know, he's just giving her everything. You know, she's going to walk out with like four cars. And all of a sudden, because of her humility, because of her hard work, and because of her commitment, all of a sudden, you will come into areas of your life where God's hand is upon your life like it never was before. Anybody ever experienced that all of a sudden God's blessing you? Bam, bam, bam. You're like, well, I don't know what's going on. It's just, bam, it's just working out for me. So when all of a sudden it stops. Well, you know, we're supposed to live like that. Bam, bam, bam. Well, it's because the Christian life's like that. Oh. It's not supposed to be like that. It's just supposed to go from victory to victory to victory. I'm not saying you live this perfect life of inconsistencies. What I'm saying is you live this life I'm learning. I'm still going. And I might struggle, but I'm not going to give up. 
Like we told some guy, can you do this? He goes, I don't know how to do that, but we can figure it out here real quick. They'll bring me the stuff. I said, wow. Just those people who you can call it for in the morning and be like, bro, I need this. Well, right now? All right, I'll be there. And they'll look like, can we do it? Like, later on? Can we do it? Tomorrow? Okay. Yeah. Those people who are willing to, to give it all in... in and when God starts blessing you, you say, God, how do I stay in this blessing? What did I sow to come here? That I must keep sowing that amount. That I must keep obeying. That I must be, be committed that my tenacity to do things to serve God may be at its full. Her humility allowed her to receive the blessings of God. Only your own pride would reject your own blessing from God. I see this guy. He's carrying a box. Can I help you? I don't need your help. Is that pride? No, that's not pride because if he can do it, he understands his own strength and he can do it by himself. So I can't be like, oh, that's pride. No, that's not pride. In fact, what you have is misjudging people. But one thing is he's struggling, he's falling apart. I mean, he's barely making it. Books are falling out. He's, can I help you? He's like, I don't need your help. Who do you think you are? Right. Yeah, sometimes I ask people, can I help you when I know they don't need help? But I just want to help. And if they say, oh, that's fine, see I don't call ability. them right. And just only see the other person trying to, trying to put you down or you feel offensive towards them, and you're not re receiving that, there's something there. Verse 20, And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Bless be he of the Lord who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto one of us of our next kinsmen. No, her ability to obey is her reward. I said, God, I like it when people give me presents and stuff. I like rewards from God. And he's like, well, all that's depending on your ability to obey. And if you don't like your rewards, do you like your rewards? Well, before you look at your rewards and you're not satisfied, we should look at your obeying. And if your obeying is in line, then your awards should be in line. But if you're getting a bunch of trash and you're just getting trash after that and trash after that, say, God, there's something wrong here. I'm, a, I'm, I'm your son and, I, and I've got to know what I'm doing here. See, some Christians don't have a balance. They go from, you're just a speck of dust, man. Oh, you're, you're just made from dirt. Who do you think you are? And you guys like, man, God made you king. I mean, this world ought to serve you at your feet. I mean, we got to wash your feet every time you take a step. And we, we, we got to have a balance here. And that's called wisdom. Chapter 3, verse 3. Wash thyself thereof, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. And make not thyself down into the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he lie, and thou shalt go in, and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And he, and she said unto her, I'm on five, all that thou sayest unto me, I will do. Note this. Your approach to your Boaz, your approach to the person who's in front, your approach to your next destination, you're not going to get it the way you're dressing. We can talk about that physically and we can talk about that spiritually. Your, your, your way of acting, the way you receive an order and the way you carry out an order. Your, your mindset must be totally under the perfect will and obedience of God. What do you mean? You want me to walk on eggshells and be perfect and walk on water and... No, what I want you to walk is, you know what, I gave it all. We lost the game. My team might have lost, but I won because I know I gave it all. And if you've ever played on a team and you know you give it all your best and you know your teammates are slacking, man, that is so hard. Because I've been the one who gives it all and I've been the one who's slacking. Not cool. Verse 10. And he said, blessed thou be the Lord. I mean, so she's like, okay, when you go over here, get here and... Lie on his feet and cover yourself up and we'll see what he does in the morning. If he, if he runs you off, like, this is a totally big turn off. But if he accepts you, she says, we have a future. And so he gets up. He's like, gets up in the morning, 
And he's like, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast shown me kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. In as much as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. He's like, you don't seek those who are rich. You don't seek those who, who serve you well. You don't do things based off money, based off emotion. You do things that you're told. And when we begin to do stuff like that, I know God begins to show his, his, his blessings on us. Say, God, why not even blessed? I'm not sowing enough. Am I sowing too little? I'm sowing too late. What is it going on? I, I know I'm not going to sow a tree and I'm not going to have a, I'm not going to sow a plant, a seed, and I'm not going to have a tree tomorrow. But I can have the ground cracking by now. I can have a little stem come out. I can have something. Keep me going. Yo, what if somebody tell you, hey, tomorrow, I want to give you the, any cell phone you want. Man, you'd be like, <laughs> so anxious, right? God wants you to be like that about the blessings. 11. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doest know that thou art a virtuous woman. He's like, you and everyone in this town is going to know who you are. I was like, whoa. And I put a side note on that one. All he said was, hallelujah, I got this girl. Totally surprised. Chapter 4, verse 2. And she took ten men of the elders of the city and said, and said, Set ye down here. And they sat down. This shows his authority. And this shows his grace. Okay, we know he's a man of money. But not just that. He's a man of power. And he's got grace. And the way he does things, he's... We'll get into that. 9, verse 9, And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day, and th that I have bought unto that with Elipmichim's and all that was Chilim's and Malham's of the land of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth and the Moabites, the wife of Mahalam, have I purchased to be my wife and raised up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren, and from the gate of his place ye are witnesses this day. Ladies, you want a man like that? You want Boaz who's rich? Well, somebody said, hey, if you can pick parents, who would you pick? I said, well, we don't have the ability to pick your parents because if you did, you'd pick rich ones. So what are the three things you should pick? That Someone told me there's three things I cannot pick, and the first one is my pastor. The second one is my parents. And the third one, they said, is who I'm going to marry. And I said, oh. Well, how does that work out? I understand the pastor part. Well, sort of. Right? Because we jump in churches and tumbleweed instead of a well-established tree. And, and what, what if I say, God, I want this. Can he give it to me? I'm sure he can, but I'm sure he's always got something better than what you're doing. So here he has nothing to hide and has nothing to doubt. It was him and her. It wasn't just, baby, I love you. Oh, man. I don't care what my parents say. I don't care what your parents say. I don't care what no one says. It's just me and you against the world. No, in fact, he says, hey, everybody sit down. I ain't got nothing to hide. And I have no doubt in me. I want you to sit down. I want you to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to bring the elders. The elders are not necessarily the old people. They're normally the wise people. If you say, if you say well, he's the elder in church, some people will think, oh, my God, he's the old guy. They're not always referring to the old guy. I'm referring to the person who's in charge of something. And it wasn't him and her against the whole world, but it was him and her before the whole world. There's a totally different concept. Normally, if everybody is against it, not that you should be directed by people, but if your parents don't bless that, if your whoever is over you doesn't bless that, if you have any doubt, say, God, show it to them or show it to me. But don't let me carry this out any farther. Verse 13, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. Then he went in unto her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And that's where the name Obed came from, which I totally wondered 
for the longest time, and they lived happily ever after. So, four points I'd like to go over. The first one is we all have a past. Can you bring me someone who's never been hurt? Can't, you can't even bring yourself. I think we've all been hurt. You know, but some of us, oh, I, I, you know, I treat her like that because the way I grew up. I'm aggressive because my daddy used to be aggressive. I'm aggressive because my dad would be violent and he hurt my mom and beat me as a child. That's why I'm so violent with other people. I, I, I don't trust girls and I act untrustworthy because, you know, the last girl I dated, she, she, she really crushed my heart and, and I react like that because where I came from. And no, no, in fact, you need to mature and take responsibility for your actions. That's what you need to do. And just because the last person did that to you, does not mean this person will do that to you. If, if I come with a friend, I'm like, yo, bro, yeah, I just, I'm always hiding my wallet. I'm, I'm like causing him to feel weird. If I always meet this new girl and we're fixing a date and I have this perspective of her cheating on me and I'm always over here jealous and you know, always here on the watch and stuff, you're causing, you provoke things to happen. Don't, don't, find somebody who takes a, a responsibility. Ladies, a man who takes, you know who messed that up? I messed that up. No, you messed it up. I told him, but not people who don't take responsibility have no character, have no commitment, have no tenacity to do things. If you say, you know what, I think you're out of line. But before I tell you that I think you're out of line, I need to check myself and say, you know what, God, I repent. And if, if I need to repent before him, I will. But God, I... I I've got to change this. I'm not going to live like my parents live. And you say, my parents live excellent. Well, that's great. I want you to live above that. I want you to live better than that. I believe you can live better than that. In order to go into the land of your Boaz, the first thing Ruth did to Naomi, you got to leave your old worldly, you got to leave your old worldly, fleshly way of living, your bad habits, your bad attitude, even your gods. The things you worship. Don't tell me you're all ready for marriage already and you still haven't left the town that you came from. No. You've got to leave all that. I, I believe she changed her way of dressing. Some girls provoke and attract things they don't want. Some girls dress like this is all I'm worth. There's nothing wrong with dressing nicely now. I'm not saying you should only wear skirts at church or only wear pants or no, no. I'm saying is don't make the way you dress the sum of all your worth. Your attitude. All of the if you if you leave all of these except for one, all you need is just one thing to keep you in that land. She told Naomi, where you die, I'll die. The God you serve, you serve your peoples or my peoples. Your, your thing is my thing. Your, your way of working, living, and breathing, and dying, and whatever it is, is mine now. I leave this completely here, and I'm ready to go forward. Number two, you got to humble yourself. Thankfulness is a very clear way that keeps you from sinning because... Thankfulness is a very clear way that keeps you from sinning because of your humility. Your humility keeps you giving thanks. And as you keep giving thanks, you realize, I don't deserve this. I shouldn't have this. I just, but you know what? Because of God's grace, he gave it to me. And when you act and treat things like this, it's very hard for you to sin. Very hard for you to sin. She was working in the field with the poor, not looking for a husband, not in that land. Right when you least expect it. Don't tell me that you've already met the person you're going to marry. Don't tell me that you, that you think you have it all set up. And you haven't even worked nothing for it. No, I believe God's blessing will come to you right when you least expect it. But if you're sitting there, oh, I see it coming. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. I know. It's coming. I got it right at heart. I don't think it's like that. I, I think you've got to get your, your world completely out of looking, searching, feeling, and doing, and completely get into, into working and serving God 100%. And as you serve God 100%, I believe she'll meet you right then and there. Or he'll meet you there. But if we're out there looking for guys and... I don't know, I'm going to try this guy out and just hang out and are, you know, just friends and see, but no, I don't like him. No, no, no. You're totally losing your focus. 
in your pride. I want you to pay very close to this. In your pride, you are sure to find your deception. Oh, it didn't work out. Oh, what made you draw that? That was your pride. Don't tell me that was, oh, that was this. No, no, no. If it's not love, it's not God at all. And if it's not humility, it's pride, and that's the end of it. In your pride, you will find your deception. Who lied to you? Who tricked you? You yourself did in your own pride. Yeah, you can blame the other person for jacking your money, robbing your heart, your emotions and stuff, but more of a fool you because they said the lie. Well, you believed it. But in your humility, you are sure to find yourself. And yourself, if, they're, if they make one with you, they are sure to be a part of you. Number three. The approach of Boaz. Boaz said, like, yo, girl, man, you hot looking girl. Yeah, I'm rich. I got this money and stuff. No, in fact, it says, and in the notes of King James, it says that he approached one of the other guys and he's like, hey, man, where's this girl from? In other words, when he spoke to her, he's like, darling, you ain't got nothing to hide. I know where you came from. I know what happened. I know where you used to live. When God approaches you, you can't hide nothing. When God comes in and he transforms that, you can't do nothing. What you're willing to expect or what you're used to from your old way of living, it's not going to happen. She's not going to come like, hey, babe, I like you. You're like, oh, snap. She called me, babe. We don't even know each other. No, no, it's not going to happen like that. It's not going to, oh, my God, I bumped into her and she drops her books and I pick her up and all of a sudden on her way up. We're like, oh, your books. Here you go. Right? No, it's not going to happen like, like you know, in the, musical high school and all that stuff it's going to happen a totally different the least way you expect it he'll just walk up right when you're all busted looking and your concrete all over your paint and whatnot and he's like you mind girl and that's the end of it bam right when you least expect it. i believe that's when god can come in in order to keep your blessings you must at all costs at all costs remain in Obedience. If you don't remain in obedience, you're lacking in blessings. And how do you not know you're lacking in blessings? We show that. We, we express that. Well, thank you very much. And that is the end of the lesson of EXBS. God bless you and have a great night. someone who doesn't smell good to you, they have the same. So I guess that goes hand in hand with like me. And um, so he's telling us more and more about how biologically, you know, there's certain things that um, set up who you're supposed to be with and how you're just like unconsciously know what's the name of this person. And I was like, God, we're not animals. Like, we don't go and smell bottoms like dogs do. You know what I mean? Like, we're not animals. How do I know that I have the right relationships around me? doesn't matter if it's someone who I will be sexual with, who I'll be a friendship with, you know, just the right relationships. And he's like, there's a rhythm. Okay, does anyone know God's rhythm? Like, can you take a guess? what his rhythm is like is it like a musical or? like a car honking <laughs> horn or it's silence it's silence okay well, it can't be silent because it's a rhythm uh, <laughs> well still you're right kind of like oh well, rhythm has to do with musical like a beat, oh, a beat. Uh, 
Footsteps, yeah. breathing. A voice? It could be like. Wind? Yeah. I guess. Wind. Or it could be like. Wind. So, like, a heartbeat? Heartbeat? Yes, that's exactly his rhythm. It's like a heartbeat. So, I was thinking, okay, so there's a rhythm. God has a rhythm. I want to have a rhythm like God's rhythm. I don't want to be like off rhythm with him. So there's a lover's rhythm, and those are two people who have the same rhythm. If you've seen people who you're like, they're meant to be because they're just so like on it. And then there's like friends who have the same rhythm, but they have their their own rhythm, but you're still on the same rhythm. And so how can you determine if someone has the same rhythm as you? Any guess? The same yeah. point of view. The same vision. Mm-hmm. The same same ministry, view. same purpose, same passion. I feel like the same things, yeah. Yep. Well, he said it. Okay, what was... Jesus had a rhythm. Um, he never ran. Have you noticed that in the Bible? He took his time. He wasn't rushed into anything. He's like, okay. I'm here. Okay, next place. I'm here. And they're like, yo, where's Jesus? Oh, he's praying on the mountain. Okay, well, where's Jesus? He's feeding those people. Oh, where's Jesus? He's telling those people to get out of his dad's home, house. So, my lesson is about rhythm. And I believe we're all on the same rhythm. And I'm really happy.